Well, okay, let's say someone comes to you and they mm -hmm. say, I am really having an issue with anger. Mm -hmm. There's nothing major going on in terms of like one incident that's making yeah. me so angry, but rather I'm finding myself quick tempered and I'm angry about a lot. Like I'm angry at the person who cut me off in traffic. I'm angry at the grocery store attendant for not, you know, like moving along fast enough. I'm angry at my husband. I'm angry at my kids. And I'm just, I don't want to be an angry person, but my actions are making me add up to be an angry person. My mind in rigorous honesty is going to think in that moment and, and hypothesize and not lead with this, but my mind will think, I wonder if this person is in the victim triangle. Mm -hmm. They have a victim martyr mentality. I do not judge them for that. And with that, if they're in this triangle of the victim triangle, they will be as a victim and they'll need God or somebody else to rescue them or they'll make people their persecutor or what we call perpetrator. So I want to, I would think, I'm, I'm contemplating. I wonder if they're in that victim martyr place. You know, everything's after me. This is not right. Lots of injustices in the world were breaking news. The world right now is filled with injustices and it's going to be that way for a while. It's, been, it's probably been that way for a while already. So then I want to interview the anger. I'll tell that person one example, you've seen it, uh, where I would say, let's just have for a moment, bring out a chair in my office, an empty chair, right? A three by five card that says anger in it, disappointment, what have you. And so I want, let's interview that anger. Now you come sit in this chair. It's so easy. It's an experiential thing. Huh. And say so you become anger to let me interview you. Anger, how long have you been present in Bill's life? And, and tell me, so a long time. Uh, what were some three things you were angry about in childhood? And just don't edit. If it comes to their mind, they say it. And say, now let's go to current. What's going on right now? Is there anything, anger that you see with Bill, let's say, that's out of alignment? Yeah, he knows he's overworking. He has some disappointments. He doesn't want to face the disappointments. His kids or his spouse or whatever or his job. And say, so he's not really grieving that because one of the stages of grief, number two, anger turned outward. Uh, at the world of anger mm -hmm. turned inward, which is often depression. Mm. So I can begin to interview that. Now, you folks at home, you can do that just with a journal. Put down, hi, my name is Anger. If you grab your thumb, a friend of mine taught me this a long time ago. There are many versions of it. But underneath anger is often hurt, injustice, fear, or frustration. Just grabbing your thumb just helps you kind of ground your body. Hurt, injustice, fear, frustration. Hurt is, I'm hurt. And see, again, you interviewed Anger and found out his name, her name was Hurt. Injustice, Hurt, Injustice. Change it to Unjustice, and this will spell Huff. I'm in a Huff. Hurt, Unjustice. This is not fair what's going on. Often you may be right. Hurt, Unjustice, Fear. I'm afraid. I don't like what's going on. Or the idea that I'm just frustrated, a blocked goal. You can go deeper over a, uh, the napkin at Panera or Starbucks and say, let's do this right here. What's under that? Where do we have that in the Bible? Proverbs 20, verse 5, the purposes in a person's heart are deep water. Waters, you need to not yeah. snorkel, but do a little scuba and say, let's think beneath. Let's go a little lower and say, tell me more. Three words, tell me more about that. I find the average person without having to go to counseling can sit down and someone say, you know what? I think that's what it is. Here come the tears. And here <laughs> comes something else. Here comes past betrayal and something new. A friend also betrayed their spouse and now you have PTSD. So interview anger and you can do it by yourself. Like what's out of alignment in my life. And then if you land, but this is unjust, this is really righteous indignation, I would say, right. But Joel's going to remind us, we're going to remind ourselves, how do I be angry, but sin not, and not want to turn and execute judgment on people. People will get that simple thing I've just done, tons of data, and they can do it at home. I like that a lot. And then I would add, if I might, a second question. Please. So it's like, okay, I'm hurt. So I'm interviewing anger and I discover mm -hmm. I'm hurt or I'm frustrated mm -hmm. and whatever, whichever of the four that yeah. you land on and then add this question. And this is the story I'm telling myself. That's brilliant. Because when you add on and this is the story I'm telling myself, that's where you can pick up on. I feel like everyone's out to get me. I feel like nothing ever goes my way. God and, is certainly not intervening as he should. Yes, and yeah. that's where we can start to pick up on. I really, I can't, I like I bristle every time I hear victim mentality. And it may be because sometimes I have a victim mentality. I, I don't do know. I do from time to time. But I, I, don't, I don't want to mm -hmm. be caught in that 
victim triangle. I don't want to have a perpetrator and a rescuer. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want to get out of that. And so it helps me when I say, okay, these are things happening. Like the anger is in an indication of a hurt that I'm feeling and the hurt that I'm feeling, you know, this is, I'm going to journal all about that. But then it's even more important for me to say, and this is the story I'm telling myself, because if yes. there is any of that, um, victimization, or if there is any of that thought where, you know, like this proves that I'm less than, this proves that he just doesn't care, whatever. The story that I'm telling myself is where the real trauma sometimes yes. is sitting. And so that helps me to add that on. And then once I see, and this is what I'm telling myself, now what's something positive that I can do to not sit in these hard feelings, but start making progress towards something better. And yeah, a little tricky thing. I, uh, boy, wow. I hope this is being recorded. That was really good. Seriously. My goodness. Um, and, and practical, which is part of your original vision with therapy and theology. I mean, we're getting a lot of theology and just some practical counseling and therapy right here at this table. Thank you for what you did with that. I have never said this to you before. I'm going to say it now. I am not a proponent of what is popular in our culture. I understand why it's there but I'm not a proponent of anger management. Oh, yeah. I'm going to manage my anger, and I'm going to, maybe it's court appointed to some people, let me just manage, no, no, no. I want to say what, I want to interview my anger and find out what's going on. Anger is often a check engine light on the dashboard of my life. And if I go below and pull codes and go, oh, this is that, guess what? That light goes off. I just, I just did it with Lexus down the street. And the car wouldn't start, the light was on, they had to fix it. It wasn't cheap, right? But it was worth it. Now I can drive again. I wouldn't be able to fix it on my own. Mm. But the idea of saying, I'm not going to manage my mm. anger, but to say, what's it trying to do? And when I go below and think beneath and apply the Bible to it and, and, and right-sizing this, analyzing the stories in my head, guess what? The anger gets managed. I don't want to put, as to quote C.S. Lewis, he said, basically, it's a paraphrase, but it's in there. Put first things first. And second things fall right in place. But if you put second things first, you'll lose first and second things. Yeah. So the second thing is get rid of the anger and manage it and just interview it. And then anger will be well managed. Yeah. 